Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity top-down shooter tutorial. Okay, so we've got a setup now so that our player can move around in the world, and we can also look at wherever the mouse is pointing, and we can shoot around as crazily as we want like that. So that's all fine and good, but being that this is a top-down shooter, one of the kind of most, uh, well not most standard, but there's two basic ways of controlling a game like this. You would have movement like we have where we look at the mouse or if you're playing with a controller you would have uh, it being controlled by using the two sticks and using the right stick to change where you're pointing and obviously the left stick to move and um, so what we're going to do in this episode is add support for using a controller in the game now obviously we don't want to be able to uh, we don't want to have our mouse being left here and our player like looking at the mouse so we're going to disable um, our mouse looking around and we're going to add uh, controller moving around at the same time uh, okay so what we need to do first of all is uh, just to start off with we just, I, I have my controller plugged in here so if I hit play on the game by default the way unity is set up uh, the way we take input from the keyboard also takes input from the controller in the exact same way so we can move around with our left stick just exactly how we want to but we can't actually rotate with our right stick so we're still we're moving I'm moving with the left stick here and our mouse is looking around so you can always play the game like this if you wanted to It'd be kind of a weird way to play the game but that would be okay anyway but so it's all well and good but we not we need to be able to control the right stick moving around in our game so what we're going to do is uh, add that into our controller input or to our uh, our games input so if we go to edit and then project settings and input here we drop down the axes so we have all these different inputs that are being used by Unity. We see we have a horizontal and vertical. So we can see here that that takes our horizontal movement is either left and right or A and D. Or if we go down to horizontal here, horizontal is also using the joystick axis down here. So what we're going to do is add a new axis at the very bottom down here. So instead of being size 18, we're going to go size 19. And what that does is it creates a duplicate of whatever the last uh, item on the list here so we've got cancel here twice so we don't want to use two cancels we want to use this for our horizontal movement on the right stick so we're going to call this uh, right horizontal and a few changes we need to make we won't have a positive button because we're not this isn't something we're pressing this is just a movement we're using we get rid of joystick button here so what we want to do is instead of it being a key or a mouse button type we want to click on it and make sure it's a joystick axis and the axis we're going to use is we're going to set this up for using an Xbox controller, which is the kind of default thing that people use uh, plugged into a computer. So the right stick on the on the Xbox controller for the X axis is the fourth axis, and for the Y axis is the fifth axis. So obviously we're doing the right horizontal, so we want to do the fourth axis, and we need to set these values up for being used as um, a controller. So you can mess around with these yourselves, but kind of these are kind of the default settings here. We set gravity to zero dead should be 0.19 or I think it's 0.19 if we look up here we should see on the horizontal one yeah 0.19 is the dead zone so that's just to make sure when your stick is when you're not moving the stick there's a little bit of leeway before it starts taking action so dead zone is 0.19 and sensitivity is 1 okay so that's fine so we want to do the exact same thing for our vertical axis on the right stick so what we'll do now now that we've added this one we can change the size again to 20 and the reason we don't just go to 20 straight away is because now very handily we've got right horizontal here it's got all the exact set sentences we had up there so we can just change this to be right vertical and then we can just change the axis here to be the fifth axis so nice and handy now we've got a right stick all set up to take input so now obviously we need to apply this to our script so we're going to go into our scripts folder and open our player controller script Mono develop here we go okay so for now just to make make things nice and simple so we can just uh, have it set up for either using uh, being controlled by a mouse or being controlled by um, the controller we're going to add a new bool here that we're going to call public bool uh, use controller like that and so what we're going to do first of all is basically say if we are using our controller we don't want to do any of this stuff that we're doing currently for fire for rotating the camera around and firing the mouse or firing the bullets with the the left click of the mouse so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to 
just in front of this, I'm actually just going to add a little comment in here so that we know, just for a quick reference, we know what is going on here. So we're just going to say rotate with mouse. That's just for our own reference there. And basically what we want to do now is say, okay, if we have our new bool that we added, use controller, if that's true, then we want to be using the controller. We don't want to use any of this mouse stuff. So we're going to say here, if not use controller like that, then we're going to put a bracket at the start. And then after our input down here, we're going to put another bracket there. And then we're going to highlight all that. If we right click then and just indent the selection. So then we know that this whole thing has been kind of indented and we know that that's all part of this little if statement here. Okay, so that's fine. So now if we just save this and pop back in, we'll let that compile for a second. And scroll this down whenever it's finished compiling. There we go. So now we're going to turn on use controller here and if we hit play, now I'll still be able to move around with the keyboard, that's fine because that won't really mess with any of our input in any way. So we can still move around just where we want but the player is no longer looking at the mouse. So perfect. So now we need to set it up so that the player will actually look at wherever the right stick is pointing. So what we can do for that is down here and um, we'll just say, uh, we're just going to add another comment here actually, we're just going to say rotate with a controller. And then we're going to add another if statement that says if use controller is true. So if we're using the controller, then we're going to go on to do this stuff here. So what we're going to do is basically we're just going to capture from the right stick which direction we should be facing. So the direction we should be facing, we're going to use a vector tree. So we're going to create a new vector tree here that we're just going to call um, player direction. I'm going to set that to be equal to uh, a vector tree dot right. So this will be how much our right movement is. So how much our player is moving to the right. We're going to multiply that by whatever input we're getting from the controller. So we're going to use that as multiplied by input oh, input dot get axis raw. And we're going to use the right horizontal that we set up. So that'll be our right stick and the horizontal uh, axis on that. So that's how we know we're, that's how we're uh, calculating our right movement. But we also want to use our up and down movement. So basically what we're going to do is just add here uh, a vector tree dot forward. So what vector tree dot forward would do is basically make the player move uh, straight up on our screen we make it move forward and we're going to multiply that by whatever our input dot get axis uh, get axis raw on the right vertical axis so that's um is basically what we're going to use to face the directions but the problem is our vector tree that forward when we multiply it by our whatever input we have, that will actually um, make us, for example, if we push up, it'll make the player uh, look down because it's the vector tree that forward is actually going the opposite way to, we, to the way we want it to. So what we'll do is just add a minus in front of the input that gets access raw, and that way it'll kind of uh, reflect the movement or reflect the, um, the direction it should be facing. So it'll be facing... Um, the way we want basically we can test it out ourselves we'll try to remove that once we have the rest of our code put in and we'll see it in action but i just wanted to point that out there now so what we're going to say here is if our player direction oh, player direction dot square magnitude so our square magnitude if that is greater than 0, 0.0 f so this is basically just a simple way of checking if our vector tree that we just created here, our player direction, has got um, any kind of movement going on. If there's any, if there's any, if, if it's basically not zero, if the player is pressing any direction at all, then we're going to start, we want to rotate our player to face that way. So once we know that the player is inputting something, we're going to say, if that's true, then what we'll do is say our transform dot rotation, oh, if I can spell this properly, there we go, transform dot rotation is equal to 
obviously a uh, rota uh, transform rotation is not a vector value it's a, it's a quaternion which is can be quite confusing but we can just say quat quaternion dot look rotation and what we can do is set it to be our player direction that we just set up uh, and so our player direction is whatever kind of forward thing we have and then we have a vector upwards which is where we're looking up and we don't want our player to look up at all really so we'll keep them as a default value so it'll be a vector tree dot up like that so we have that set up there and that's kind of the basics of what we need to do to make our player rotate the way we want so we're going to save that and we'll pop back into the game here and we should be able to see it in action so i'm just going to pick up my controller here once this is compiled and i'm going to hit play and now although our mouse is over here the way we want it to be we can move around and now we can look whatever direction we want so we can make our player point in whatever direction we could possibly desire so as you can see so i'm i'm pressing down now and it's and i'm pressing up and it's going the right direction so just as an example of what i was talking about with the um the minus value of our input that the excess uh, vertical i'm just going to remove that minus and we're going to save it and go back in here again and you can do the same to test it uh, test it out and see because obviously it's hard to it's hard to see i'm what i'm pressing on the controller here but if I play this and if I press if I'm pressing I'm pressing up here and our player is looking down and if I press down is looking up so if we pu push off to the left we're facing the right way still and if we push off to the right we're still going the correct way there so kind of it's a little bit unintuitive so that's why we have to multiply it by uh, the minus value to get it the right way around so We've got our, our player looking around in different directions, just the way we want, but we also obviously need to be able to fire our guns. So, what we're going to do is, on the controller, we're basically going to use the right bumper button on the Xbox controller to fire our bullets. So we'll say, if, um, much like we did for getting the mouse button up here to set the firing to be true, this time we're going to say, if input dot, um, what we could do is do a get button and we could actually go back in here and we could set up a new axis on our project settings so we could go to our input if it would let me no it's compiling and everything there we go so we could go here and we could add a new button down at the very bottom here to represent the right bumper and for firing our guns or we could just go to we could use fire one here and set this to be joystick button five which is the right bumper button and we could use fire one to fire but we're going to show a different way of doing it here we go back in here so we can use if input dot get key we're going to use get key down much like we use get button down we're going to use get key key down and then we're going to do key code dot joystick one button five so what that'll do is Button 5 on the Xbox controller is the uh, right bumper. So what we're saying is on the joystick 1, so whatever is player 1 basically, uh, button 5 on that. Whenever that is pressed down, what we want to do is, much like we did with the mouse, we'll say the gun dot is firing is equal to true. So that will let us shoot our gun in the game. And then we want to be able to make sure that we stop that happening too. So we're going to copy all of this paste it down below and instead of get key down we're going to have get key up and gun firing is equal to false okay we'll save that pop back in here wait for that to compile for a second and now if we hit play we can move around and we can fire our guns just the way we want to by clicking our buttons in the game so perfect that's just what we want to happen uh, but obviously now we could go to the player and if we scroll down to the script we could put this on use controller and now we're back into uh, we sorry, we deactivated use controllers and now we're back to firing with the mouse and now our looking around with the right stick is not not working again so so that's basically how we can have those two different settings set up but of course 
most games nowadays, what you really need to be able to do is actually be able to switch between uh, using control with the mouse or using control with the controller. And what we should base that off of is whatever is the last input that was used in the game. So what we're going to do in the next episode of, of our top down shooter here, series here is we're going to add a way for our game to be able to detect whether the player is using uh, a mouse and keyboard or is using a controller. So we're going to take a look at that in the very next episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching this episode and if you want to learn more about developing your own games, you can follow the link on screen to my complete 2D platformer game development course on Udemy, where you will learn how to program and build a complete game in Unity 2D with multiple levels, enemies and unique boss battles. So click the link on screen or in the description below and get the course today.